It's Friday the 13th again for the second time this year. Am I remembering last year? We all runs together. Is it not normal to have two in one year? I don't know. Everybody's on vacation, though. There's no, there's no news the rest of the year. Everybody should go on vacation. <laughs> the Amazon warehouse workers are just angrily shaking their fist at you. <laughs> all the retail workers. <laughs> you should have already ordered your Christmas presents. I'm sorry. Well, we have the surveillance state, and our surveillance state isn't as bad as China's surveillance state. Although... We do impressively get the number two spot, which is weird because you would think of uh, the UK, or at least Britain, where they have that whole uh, CCTV system, right? Not so much. So, engagement challenge. What is the count of total surveillance cameras on the Earth right now? Pause the video. Put in your vote. (laughs) Is it more or less than the number of people? (laughs) (laughs) Well... A world with a billion cameras watching you is just around the corner. Global numbers grow almost 30% as higher image quality allows better facial recognition. So it's not just that there are more cameras, it's that there are more pixels. And there's a literal explosion of pixels. So the current number is right around 770 million cameras. So how long do we add that last little 230? Is that counting uh, Facebook portal or no? I think these are like governments, yeah. like public surveillance. Yeah. If so you the, put Ring in there, I bet it's much higher. <laughs> yeah. Well, not yet, but probably by this time next year at the rate at which Ring is being sold. But also all the cell phone cameras and the Pokemon Go players. And yeah, it's kind of nuts. So the ranking goes China, China number one, then the U.S., and then all of Asia, excluding China, comes in at number three. <laughs> The UK is just not even trying. Yeah. Oh, well, they're pretty small. My impression of the UK CCTV cameras is that most of them don't work the way that they're supposed to. The ones that do work are like old and like 420p resolution. Cause well, you still count them, right? They tried to put them like way up high on a pole so that a person is like two pixels. And they're like, yeah, this one camera covers an entire city block. It's like bad news, guys. You can't see anything when that happens. And despite their efforts, they're constantly whining about, oh, stabbings and knife crimes and stuff like that. They got him with a potato peeler. So, yeah, that was effective. Way to trade your freedom for security. Uh, Now, you talked about this one earlier, and we thought it was going to be in uh, the other one, but it's in security, which actually... Kind of makes sense. Also, I put an FBI story in security because sometimes it's like... It's it's so hard. Is FBI security or is it government? And then I'm not even consistent with my determination. So, whatever. We're still going to cover it. TikTok's parent company sued for collecting data on kids. Now, this is the musical.ly thing that we reported on a couple of weeks ago. That has come to a head. They weren't able to work it out. Uh, it was where TikTok acquired that company. And that that technically that company has been sued. And so TikTok is like, ah, look, that was an acquisition. We don't know. Ah. And that happened before TikTok had them. Yeah. So... I guess they fixed it after that. I'm not. That wasn't clear here. No, I, uh, well, it can't prove that they're still collecting data on kids. Yeah, but see, I think it's ridiculous that we should have a double standard. Yeah. If it's not okay to, do, to collect those things about kids, it shouldn't be okay to collect those things about anybody. I, mean, I guess there's a consent variable in there, <laughs> but still. <laughs> But you're not allowed to consent to other things, mostly, on almost all of the U.S., things like prostitution. So. Or, like, things that you put in your body. <laughs> the kinds of plants that you set on fire. <laughs> Apple. So, Apple has the activation lock, which is super effective. If your phone gets stolen or, you know, so you lose it or whatever, and you can lock it down, and the next person cannot use it they can get no value out of it but at the same time what percentage of apple users do you think understands that in a resale scenario or you know like giving it donating it is there a disincentive to help apple uh have apple help their customers understand hey are you retiring this computer you just hit this Uh, button well you're getting ahead of yourself here but Absolutely. Apple benefits from every one of those that can't be activated because you can't track down the original person. So how do we fix that? 
Well, we don't fix it. We expand the program. <laughs> iFixit has got the article, the report on Apple's activation lock will make it very difficult to refurbish Macs. So this is part of the T2 chip and the encryption. The encryption on these devices can be so good that a repair shop is unable to reset them. So you can say, it's like, hey, you can't ever fence stolen goods. A stolen Mac laptop would be worthless. That sounds pretty good. But there's also no way for an owner to say, I'm done with this, give it to somebody else. Well, there is, but it's an obscure total reset process. Now, if you're getting rid of a computer, you should be totally resetting it. But we're talking about Apple users here. <laughs> Literally everything in this Mac was worth, it turned back into sand. Is that like a genie? Like the genie's new master, you have to wish on something? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think that's a rule. I think it's whoever's got the, <laughs> the the lamp, right? It's not like that. You think that uh, anybody exper experimented with Genie DRM via wishes? <laughs> that would be what Tim Cook would do, right? Yeah. I wish that no one else could ever make another wish is my first wish. <laughs> DRM is a plague and it's bad. It doesn't stop piracy. We've seen study after study that proves that the people, a lot of the people who pirate games or movies or whatever weren't going to buy them anyway. And then if you stop them through DRM, then they probably are never going to make your money. Or at least you're not going to make that like first week sale. They're going to buy it secondhand or something like that. But there's a darkness to DRM. And it's not just how annoying it is. It's that ultimately you're creating something that just like the Mac Makes it impossible to get around in the future. No one's thinking about the future when we it's, think about it's DRM. It's fragile. The curse of the outdated DRM. It's claimed another victim, Tron Evolution. If you bought Tron Evolution, but you haven't played it yet, the game is currently broken, owing to the DRM servers are down. Well, SecureOM is what secures this. Disney has parted ways with SecureOM. So the SecureOM servers are no longer listening Tron evolution <laughs> which means that when you install it SecureOM just always returns false yeah gotta, gotta love how that game's played so Disney has been alerted about this and their response is oh, we're working on that don't worry <laughs> thank you for your patience eh. or eh, we don't care yeah no one that's not gonna uh, the, the crazy thing is people are still installing Tron evolution <laughs> it's a it's historic it's like you know, if we hadn't made the Rosetta Stone, we wouldn't have been able to translate hieroglyphics. Are you comparing Tron Evolution to the Rosetta Stone? <laughs> no, just the, the, the lack of any kind of thing to make the DRM go absent the original servers. A lack of the Rosetta Stone. We've talked about uh, packages and libraries that are poisoned these days. And when you're doing programming, more often than not, you're downloading some kind of library, right? Uh, this is Python. You're going to be going out there to pip to be yeah. getting some stuff. You t is there any way to get around it? No. But you got to be super, super careful. It's terrifying. <laughs> two malicious Python libraries caught stealing SSH and GPG keys. One library was available only for two days, but the second was live for nearly a year. Yeah. So, this is crafty. Look what they did here. Python 3-date util. Now there is a library called date util that's safe and you can use it, but Python 3 dash date util steals your keys. And then we have Jillyfish. You see that first L is actually an uppercase I. Mm. Jillyfish. So if you just tab complete and you're not looking. Uh, <laughs> and I becomes, I comes before L. So Jillyfish perfectly safe useful jellyfish steals your stuff yeah so watch out for that you always got to be careful the big uh dump of remember they put together that like massive billion password database they collated all the, the the passwords together well the good news about that is we can test against it much more easily you know the the folks at microsoft can use that <laughs> as a, a lookup tool you can turn that on in office 365 with a couple checkbox now it's like are, you, are your users using terrible passwords click 
Well, probably because of this. <laughs> because they did some, uh, you know, they ran some data and it's terrifying. 44 million Microsoft users reused passwords in the first three months of 2019. So Microsoft used that database of 3 billion publicly leaked passwords. Not that they reused passwords, but they used passwords from the naughty list. Yeah, 44 million users were affected. Now, I, don't, I didn't notice. Did, did they compare both email and password? Or do they just find that? Because there could be some... Uh, they did both, but they were independent procedures. So okay. the email was, your email was on this list, change your password. And the second so, thing was, your password was one of the passwords, change your password. So like a lot of people, a lot of very not creative people have a dog that's you know named Skippy or whatever. Or a cat named Snowball. So I could see a lot of people using Snowball as their password. <laughs> you know. <sighs> but you can enable this now. Actually, uh, it's a plugin for. You can even get a, a PAM plugin for it, which is amazing. You can have your Linux passwords checked against all these billions of passwords, and it only takes about fifty milliseconds. So you should definitely enable that. We should turn that into a video. Mm, yeah, and they have that uh, the way of doing it without actually sending your password. Which yeah, is yeah, brilliant. And uh, uh, password managers now are also some password managers are incorporating the naughty list. So that when you try to set a password in your password manager and save it, it's like, ah, hang on, I'm not sure that's the most secure password. With the, uh, you know, the more and more rapid, the, the quicker the cycle of leaks as it continues to accelerate, how long before passwords are like IP addresses <laughs> and like you have to use 500 digits just to get one that's not on the naughty list? I'd love to have the, the data points of who all use the, uh, the quote from Call of Cthulhu. Like they use the, the raw lab, blah, blah, blah. Like that was their password, and it's like this is super secure, but not really because you can copy paste it from the text. But uh, some guy lost like ten or fifteen Bitcoin because that was his wallet password, and I was like, this is really secure, and it's, it was not secure at all because that was a thing that you could try. And there's no extended characters or numbers in it. Most uh, JavaScript wouldn't even let you validate that. Yeah, yeah. It's probably too long as well. Yeah. The old password is too long validation. <laughs> I never really could understand that one. Well, if you are using your uh, password manager in Linux, you're very security minded. You're probably using the VPN too, right? You're feeling pretty superior about that. You're looking down at all the plebs and like, ha, ah, they think my connection's coming from Iceland. Well, there's one more thing for you to worry about. Oh no, there's a new Linux vulnerability that lets attackers hijack VPN connections. Security researchers found a new vulnerability allowing potential attackers to hijack VPN connections on affected Unix devices. Uh, that inject arbitrary data pay, uh, payloads into IPv4 and IPv6 TCP streams. It's got a CVE, so several different distros are impacted. Uh, basically, it's just it's a flaw in the TCP stack. Not really. It's not been patched yet, but presumably someone will fix this. It affects pretty much every kind of VPN protocol too, so there is no escape. Was it intentionally designed this way? Is the NSA somehow responsible for this? <laughs> it's the elliptic curve all over again. Do you remember, I guess it was probably like, what, 2008, when AVG was a really good antivirus? I always think it was like 2003. Was it before then? It was a long am I, time am ago. Am I misremembering? Yeah. <laughs> it was a long time ago. Well, those days are over <laughs> and we'll never see them again. Mozilla removes Avast and AVG extensions from add-on portal over snooping claims. The four extensions, two from Avast and two from AVG, are still available on the Chrome Web Store. So Mozilla got some complaints here, and it's still not really clear what's going on. Mozilla removed the extensions, but it does seem like the extensions would report whatever web page you're looking at back to a central server. Now, whether that was enough for the central server to also log in with, as you with like cookies and stuff, we don't know. Now we've seen this before from security plugins, and they're like, "No, we're testing to see whether or not this web page is safe for you to go to." And to do that, we need to log everything. We're definitely not selling that to advertisers, but they probably are. We don't know. We we have no way of knowing. We have no way of knowing what their what their intention is. But this would be a very dangerous database to accidentally leak. Or a very lucrative database to own. <laughs> yeah. Now it's not just Linux that has a new vulnerability this week, but also Android. And uh, they're going after something more juicy than just your VPN connection. 
Vulnerability in fully patched Android phones under active attack by bank thieves. Strand hog is a spoofing flaw exploited by 36 apps, including banking Trojans. I, the article doesn't say, but I think this is the vulnerability um, that we talked about a couple of weeks ago where you could airdrop a file and then the file that you airdropped basically runs with the same permissions as like the airdrop utility or the Bluetooth transfer utility or whatever it is. So there are different applications that will do different things with files on the file system in Android and you can pretty easily get one of those trusted applications to run something that it should not trust but it will run with the permissions of that application and it can even request more permissions so like yeah. if you load something in say the maps application the maps application can say hey can i use your camera and it's like oh the maps application wants to use my camera that might be fine but it's actually the trojan i think they're exploiting like the the oauth type thing where like okay i have this thing and I want to log you in through Google or I want to log you in through your Steam account or your Facebook account. And then I can spawn that app to do the OAuth to, to then give me a token for your login. And then Steam asks for permission to do more stuff. But they're spawning their Steam lookalike. Uh. And so you log in with that and then it logs into the real Steam in the background and it still logs you in, but now it's still in your credentials. It's fully patched. Don't know how it's being exploited. We'll, we'll know in a week or two. But it's nasty. So yeah. That's another thing where it's like, okay, instead of trying to remember all these passwords and, you know, have all those out there in leaked databases, maybe I just use an OAuth and I blog into everything through Facebook, right? Well, that's not secure either, it turns out. At least not when something like this happens. We've talked a lot about Ring and <laughs> how I, incredibly horrible it is for privacy well it's just week after week it just keeps getting worse every week there's a new thing that comes out about ring that makes you more and more terrified not just to own ring but what if my neighbor gets it i can't stop them <laughs> and this week no exception ring reportedly outed camera owners to police with a heat map it has since removed the tool all right so picture this you're in a police precinct and you're like hey Amazon, can you tell us who in this neighborhood has a ring? And Amazon says, I can't do that. I, you know, privacy concerns. But what I can do is give you a map of the neighborhood down that is, that is so high resolution, you could read the license plate numbers off of people's cars. And I'll show you exactly where you're getting live video feed from. If only the police had a database <laughs> of where people live, they could put the two together. Mm, if only they had uh, actually, like, forced some people to change their addresses in order to map everything to 911 calls like a couple <laughs> decades ago and have exact perfect records like that. It's like, well, on the overlay here, I'm seeing that this house has a has a ring video feed. I bet that's the Johnsons. Yeah, I was uh this phone has like the voice over Wi-Fi improvement thing and I'm out there where I don't get great coverage, so I was like, yeah, I'll turn that on. It's like, "Oh, we need your exact address for 911 purposes to tie to this IP address. And I was like, all right, I'm just not going to do it. Man. Nope. That's, if I ever get sued for copyright, I know that this is going to screw me. So it'd be funny if you had whole network VPN and like the IP address was like in Estonia. And it's like, what? <laughs> what, it, what? They would probably charge me for the helicopter <laughs> that flew to Arkansas to try to, yeah, I'm not doing that. So I also have to remember that Ring has the whole like the police get a kickback if they put you on to Ring and they'll come to your house and be like, hey, you need to say yes to the letting us view your video and they'll coerce you in various ways. So now not only do they know who does have it, but who doesn't have it, who is perhaps a potential customer. <laughs> Truly the darkest timeline. It really is. It's, it's like uh, this timeline is 98% cacao. <laughs> so we talked about uh the doctors getting on youtube to check out surgeries which is weird but that one's kind of like a constructive use of the internet right mm -hmm. this one may be a little bit more destructive because as this is the security section everything eventually gets leaked right so what if i told you that some really really personal embarrassing details about you might be out there on the cloud in voice format. 
Amazon lets doctors record your conversations and put them in your medical files. It also does transcription, and that seems exceedingly dangerous to me. So not only are they in voice format, they're in plain text. Great. Uh-huh. So, yeah, if doctors are getting on this Amazon medical thing, it's not just Google that's getting into the medical game. It's Google and Amazon. Do you think they'll ever get to a point where, like, a hospital has, they're either a Google hospital or an Amazon hospital? See, I thought that was going to happen years ago because there was, like, the Google Health thing, and then there was the, the Microsoft, like, Bing Health Records that wasn't Bing at the time. And both of those companies have basically shut down those efforts. They're like, we're going we're gonna to make it so that, there's a standard format and everybody can exchange medical records and this nonsense of your doctor waiting two weeks on your MRI scan, that's terrible. And I agree that's terrible, but the Google like Facebook warehouse data thing did not happen. Okay. So we won't do it through the hospital. We'll do it through the insurance company. Yeah. That's probably what's happening. Yeah. So anyway, I imagine you, you you got a gunshot wound, right? And they're run, you're, they're rushing you in through the trolley, and it's like, sir, would you like to sign up to Amazon Prime and save thirty percent on this procedure? <laughs> your insurance company requires it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and your medical records are going to be one or the other. Oh, it's just a I, I gotta wonder though, what's to stop Jeff Bezos from getting in the insurance game? Because he's got, uh, uh, like, he would, it would be just a license to print money far beyond what he's got now. Also think, uh, well, for Google, maybe this is more valuable for Google, but if Google got into the insurance game, now they can mine that data for your profile. What a time to be alive. Yeah. So it's like, hey, this guy's got high blood pressure, so advertise to him based on that. And uh, he's got back pain, so he probably is on opiates, so let's advertise you know, stuff like that to him. And also, he started using Viagra six weeks ago. After he met his new tennis trainer. So <laughs> send that to the divorce lawyers. Yeah. This is a story I alluded to before. We had that FBI block and I should have put this there, but I didn't. Because I saw this and I was like, this is more of a security story. Even though the other ones were kind of the same thing. Now, even the FBI is warning about your smart TV security. This is a, a callback to a few days ago's episode where we talked about the, uh, the whole IoT thing. Because the FBI is like, look, this IoT, it's the Wild West. You can't trust these devices. You're going to have to separate them from your network because they're going to do naughty things eventually. And smart TVs are perhaps the... Target number one? They're the most powerful of the IoT devices, right? Uh, Maybe. Although, you know, Vizio said they couldn't update to the latest version of Netflix because it requires uh, too much CPU horsepower to decode. Yeah, yeah. Uh, My mom's got a TV and it's too old. Yeah. The Netflix app no longer works. Makes sense. Mm. If only there was some sort of modular standardized connector that <laughs> displays had that would allow you to replace out the electronics that are feeding the signal to the display. If only we could have predicted that computers tend to get much more power hungry <laughs> and processor demanding as time goes by and we could <laughs> simply plug a new one in. <laughs> We're going to do away with all of the ports on the TVs. TVs don't have any ports oh, at all. How long until Apple gets, <laughs> starts manufacturing a TV? I, I think that would be a selling point. They're like, look, you paint the charging pad into the wall, <laughs> and then when you just hang the TV on the wall, no, no wires and it's powered. No, you buy the Apple mounting bracket. <laughs> well, no, see, the charging pad is far better because you can only watch eight hours of TV at a time, and then it has to turn off to recharge. <laughs> That's a way of controlling your screen time. <laughs> you can- you can turbocharge the charging time by just letting it play ads. Uh, well, that's nonsensical, which is appropriate because we're moving on to nonsense. Now, if you are a vegan, you might want to tune out right now. Because oh, yeah. I got some bad news for you. <laughs> the vegan lifestyle. Now, some people do it for health, right? But if you're doing it for health, like, why wouldn't you eat honey, right? Oh, yeah. So it's really about bee vomit sounds delicious you have to be you have to respect the animals and we're not supposed to eat them we're not supposed to eat their byproducts because they made that for them not for us but that's kind of like a moral high ground right and what if i told you that the things you were eating were suffering just (laughs) as much as those poor little baby pigs new scientist shows that recordings are revealing that plants are making ultrasonic squeals 
when stressed. Now, I, I don't. I read the article. I don't know if I agree with uh, new scientists referring to the noises as squeals. <laughs> it makes a great headline, though. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, the plants do actually make ultrasonic noises when they're stressed. So, uh, if the plant has been damaged, it moves from about one ultrasonic squeal per hour to like twenty-five to thirty-five, like one every two seconds. So that's that's interesting. And no water was the worst. Yeah, it's like they seemed to suffer the most when they were thirsty. So I, I wonder this. There has to be an evolutionary mechanism for this. So I wonder if other plants can pick up on the ultrasonic squeals and if well, if stuff happens as a result of that. That is the one thing. So I'm thinking like, because plants are such a communal type of living organism, right? They rarely just live one at a time. They seem to do better in groups. So. That could be a way to maybe like, could they have some sort of response to like, everybody's screaming about water. Maybe I won't drop seeds right now, mm. but have we ever seen anything that would make us think that? I, I don't know that we've, we've even really looked for that. I think we've just it's like, oh, there's been a reduced amount of water. The plants grow more slowly. I mean, basically with plants, it's a game of how quick can they extract carbon from the air to use for structural purposes. So I don't know, but if we can prove that the plants are suffering, what happens then? <laughs> I have a feeling that some people are just going to look this over. Or Yeah, they're going to be like, no, that's fake. I don't like that. Which is what I feel about veganism. <laughs> <laughs> How would you kill the plant suddenly so that it doesn't suffer either? Because they're, <laughs> they're so distributed. I mean, when, when plants get cancer, but because the cells don't really move much in, 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 in plants, the cancer doesn't like go all over the plant and then kill the plant because the cancer was literally everywhere. So So what you have to do is you have to grow all of your own food, right? And then you have to like get your water up to a rolling boil and pull the plant right out of the ground, right into the water. (laughs) It's like a lobster. Minimal suffering. (laughs) (laughs) And if when you take plants to a restaurant, for example, you have to just like dig them up, transplant them and take Mm -hmm. them alive to the restaurant until they're ready to be cooked. Well, that, that would be horrifying from the time that they were dug up to the time that they were actually ready to be eaten. That's true. That would be. Yeah, so we can't do that at all. I guess you could freeze them. You could flash freeze them. <laughs> you think <laughs> the refrigerant truck might damage the environment somewhat? <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of destroying the environment, I love Nestle water. It's delicious. That's what's in your thermos. It is. And... The ice cubes in my thermos are also made of Nestle water. <laughs> that requires Krista, planning. Krista hates that. <laughs> She's, but she uses K cups. Hmm. Yeah. Miss hypocrite. So, Nestle water, and I, I'll admit they're evil, and that's actually part of the appeal that I like about them because it's like all these vegans and hipsters. It's like, oh, we're destroying the earth, but they're hypocrites. Most of them. Any of them that have children, you're a hypocrite. <laughs> And Nestle is just like in your face. They're like the Xi Jinping of destroying the environment. It's like, yep, that's what we're doing. And we're making a ton of money doing it. And slave, they have slaves. Nestle has slaves. So it's a little tongue in cheek. But when they make claims like this, you can't help but just like sit back and sort of give them the slow clap. It's like, wow, that is. <laughs> Did you really expect that to work? <laughs> Nestle cannot claim that bottled water is, quote, an essential public service, a court has ruled. So uh, Michigan's second highest court rules in favor of the township case that could damage the company's effort to privatize water. So, yeah, they were they were looking at uh, putting a manufacturing plant here, but also because it's Michigan, you know, they're like, hey, we can just say the bottled water is a public service and the township can't do things like control the price of water that we're taking from their environment. Which is... Ridiculous. I mean, bottled water became popular in, was it the 90s, I guess? Or was it later? Mm, I think it was probably the 90s, yeah. Maybe been like turn of the century. So we got along pretty well without it for quite a while. Now, the shocking thing here, let's see if I can quickly spot the the number of gallons they were pulling out. Do you remember reading 400 that? gallons per minute. I thought it was more than that. I thought it was in the thousands. Do you see it? Oh, maybe. Maybe the maybe nominal flow was like 400 gallons per minute. Uh. Oh, you're right. Yeah, 400 gallons per minute. Uh, it wanted to increase to 400 gallons per minute, so it's somewhere less than that. But 400 gallons per minute—that's a lot of water. That is crazy. And 
the Michigan people pointed out, it's like the aquifer can't sustain that. This is you're just going to dry us out. You're going to extract our blood <laughs> and leave a desiccated husk as you move on to the next victim. And yeah, that's pretty much the Nestle business model. This is for Iron Mountain, though. You're, you're Ice uh, Mountain or Ice Mountain, yeah. That's the same thing. You're, uh, yeah. But your pure, pure life is doesn't. It's not like pure life doesn't have blood on its hands. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Uh, speaking of blood on your hands, the CRISPR guy that made the HIV resistant mm-hmm. babies. Everybody was kind of like, "Whoa, you shouldn't have done that." But he was like, "I'll do it again." You ever see that goofy meme? That's funny. <laughs> got an obscenity in it i can't say it here but it's funny uh so this guy actually released his research and some other scientists have had the ability to go over it and look you know see like okay what did you do and the findings are a little alarming yeah uh the headline from the guardian is china gene edited baby experiment quote unquote may have created unintended mutations unquote so these were twins they got crispered and uh, the basically the scientists are saying two things here one that they did successfully target the correct gene, but they did not edit the gene in the correct way. And the information in the paper shows that, like, there should be some proteins or something that they can detect. Those aren't there. So the mutation that confers resistance for HIV is not present in these twins, but something was affected. Now, if we confirm that these twins are terrible mutants... And as they grow, it's not super obvious, but testing confirms like, okay, there's something ain't right here. Do we, as a society, or I guess, you know, China, I mean, the qu- I'm asking this question knowing what the answer from China will be. <laughs> Do we have the right to stop them from breeding? Uh, there's a, there's a, a thing that I forgot that I knew until I reread it in this article, and that was part of the reason for this insanity is that the father has HIV, and All so right, yeah. in China, they couldn't afford to do some kind of, you can do sperm washing, which is today I learned, um, and it'll get rid of the HIV that way. But they couldn't afford to do that, so they did this instead, which seems like a terrible choice. Well, the they wanted to have a kid, and that all that therapy and everything, I think they had to do like in vitro and stuff, right? They, of course, couldn't afford it. So this was an alternative. This madman came along and he was like, oh, I could help you, you know. And <laughs> but there's a price. Right. The, the literal Rumpelstiltskin of the monkey paw of CRISPR. <laughs> Did you also know that they have just opened an HIV positive sperm bank? Really? Yes. That's horrifying. And it's kind of like a woke thing to be like, let's remove the stigma from H. And I guess they do the sperm washing thing. Hmm. Did you buy anything on Cyber Monday? Uh, I got some stuff on eBay. How, percentage-wise, how much extra box was on your package? Have you seen my desk? It's just <laughs> like a pile of cardboard. We're probably like toward the top 80 percentile of yeah. offenders when it comes. With literally everybody in the neighborhood is like, hey, I need some boxes. Let's go to your... Yeah. It's bad. The Amazon effect is flooding a struggling recycling system with cardboard. More cardboard could wind up in landfills. That seems terrible because cardboard, these, this is like the easiest thing in the world to recycle. You just pull the packing material off of it. Well, slow down. <laughs> because this headline is misleading. It's not Amazon. I mean, Amazon's certainly contributing to it. It's the Chinese trade war. You see, we take all of our cardboard, and we put it on ships, and China's like, yeah, I'll give you a couple pennies for that. I can recycle that. I'll make that into something useful. Well, not anymore. Yeah. See, the trade war has put a stop to that. We don't have anywhere in America that can recycle these, and we really should because it's easy to recycle. But I think with our labor laws and you yeah. know, like minimum wage and stuff, you can't make it profitable. You would have to build a factory that's more automated than, than most of the, the factories are. It's sort of a chicken and egg problem. You need the Chinese to come up with the automation technology, <laughs> which will then de- be deployed in America so that it's safe for American which workers. Which will have a Trojan in it. <laughs> uh, this is something that Bernie Sanders needs to tax and spend on. <laughs> Better recycling infrastructure yeah, in America. Right, yeah. Now we've... Uh, the list of companies that are bending over backwards to the Chinese demands. Let's see, we got Steam, we got Google, we got Apple. Oh, Apple plus a thousand. We got um, the 
the chip makers, basically. Basically, any company that makes over a billion dollars a year. Didn't Nike do something? Yeah, I mean, literally every Sony, company. I think Sony did something. Yeah. So, But here's one that you might not have ever expected. DC Comics comes under fire for deleting Batman poster that sparked a Chinese backlash. I, uh, the poster describes Batman throwing a Molotov cocktail, which I think is out of character for Batman. Yeah, he won't use weapons. for like, you know. Guns. Not like that. Maybe he was trying to stop a giant robot enemy or something. I don't think Batman would throw a Molotov. So this is, uh, was it called DC Black Label or something like that? And apparently this is supposed to be like a more mature Batman. He's getting and, old and he's like, I, I gotta, I gotta throw and, the Molotov. But some people in China, so they kind of like went conspiracy. They like kind of went Alex Jones on this. So something in it is pink, right? He was wearing a pink something. Pink is the resistance color. Or no, was it yellow? It's yellow. I thought yellow. it was, I thought it was Pepe. Well, yellow too. Okay. Yellow is the Hong Kong resistance color, and Batman was wearing yellow. He was throwing a Molotov, which is obvious, you know, like all the resistance uses Molotovs. And there was something else about this picture. And they thought, hey, this might be a secret piece of propaganda, Hong Kong propaganda. And you have to take it down immediately. <laughs> Deleted. And DC said, <laughs> you're right, we do. <sighs> you know, I don't think Batman. Would have accepted that. <laughs> I don't think that goes with Batman's character. What would Rachel Ghoul say? So, uh, social media often brings out the worst in people because they want attention and they'll do stupid things like show off drugs and guns on social media or, uh, you know, torture people with molten lead like the <laughs> PTSD article. But that, that was Facebook video. And who would upload that to Facebook? Oh, listen. <laughs> I got, I've got to impress my friends on Facebook. What? But here's one that uh, maybe is more terrifying because the likelihood of me getting tortured with molten lead, I feel is low. <laughs> but the likelihood of me being in a dentist chair unconscious, incredibly high. <laughs> dentist in Alaska allegedly rode hoverboard while extracting patient's tooth. You know, if this was in China, this would be something about the organ harvesting <laughs> <Yes>. camps. <laughs> <While> extracting <laughs> Uyghur kidneys. <laughs> Yeah, so it's. Uh, the, I watched the video. It's just a, a dentist. You know, he's just standing on a hoverboard while extracting a tooth. But if you read the the complaint, the criminal complaint, it's like you know, this is the most reckless thing that there has ever been in the entirety of Alaska ever. And it's like, should he have done that? No. Does do we need to really have the prosecutor vent his spleen on this? Probably not. But. There was also quite a bit of like Medicare fraud. Yeah, that's a little problematic. Yeah. <laughs> You've been stealing money <laughs> like hand over fist. So I think the tooth extraction is just the headline. <laughs> the final straw. It's like yeah. the straw that broke the camel's back. Yeah, and you also you have to always have to wonder, like, why are you practicing dentistry in Alaska? What did you do <laughs> in the mainland? Some people just like the quiet. I guess. <laughs> But is the kind of guy who rides a hoverboard while he extracts your tooth and posted social media is he a guy who enjoys the quiet? Maybe uh, he's just gone stir crazy. Oh, I got some money my grandpa left me. I'm just going to go up there and work on my book for a while. I'll be back in a couple of years. It's like, no. Yeah, it's before just, you know you're practicing dentistry. Yeah. <laughs> now, one of our favorite stories ever on the Level 1 News was uh, Romeo the Frog and his courtship, which we can't get any more details about because that stupid Twitter is just constantly giving me, you know, like environmentalist garbage and nothing about Romeo the frog. I'm very angry about that. But frog research is a big deal. We're trying to learn more about them constantly. And you want to go out, you want to listen to the frogs, right? But some of those frogs live in the Amazon. How do you listen to frogs in the Amazon without going there every week? There's a solution. Scientists create a special phone to dial up chatty frogs in the wild. Ribbits and real-time researchers ask themselves, why make so many nighttime pond visits when you can just pick up a frog phone instead? I wonder if the phone would be high enough fidelity. Yeah, she's calling from her iPhone. That figures. <laughs> it's a solar-powered phone. That's all it is. There it is in the wild. So it fires up. You dial into it, and it's got some decent microphones, I guess, and it turns into the frogs. We can study their calls. But really, aren't all the frogs just screaming, I want to have sex, I want to have sex, I want to have sex? Yeah. Just like the birds, <laughs> just like the crickets, <laughs> just like all the animals. 
that should be a thing in one of the episodes of Rick and Morty when they, like they get an animal translator like Doctor Doolittle, and that's just all that they hear. And I'm it's sure like, some show has done that joke before, <laughs> for sure. We're getting into a world where our generation certainly is getting into political office, which is crazy <laughs> because you know you don't think of yourself as getting older, but you are. You're getting old, and you're injuring your hip, <laughs> which I've done. <laughs> But what about we think about lawmakers playing Steam games? It's kind of crazy, right? Like, is, do you have the the cognitive dissonance of that as I do? No, yeah. just me. I was uh, when I read this headline, I got the picture of like somebody going on voice chat to like playing Overwatch, and it's like, now I'm the candidate for you, like doing <laughs> campaigning, like actually in the game. <laughs> that's a different. I don't think that's what he was doing. So, no. but playing Steam games, that's fine. Using campaign money on Steam games? Uh, that's over the line. <laughs> Tech Times reports that a U.S. Congr- congressman has pled guilty to using campaign funds on Steam games. That is a federal offense. That's a felony. Now, it wasn't just Steam games. That's the, that's the fun headline, right? It turns out he was just... It, all of his living expenses were coming from campaign contributions. Also, $1,300 on Steam games. There's a lot of rules for this kind of thing but what if he was campaigning with steam games under what under what scenario would that be okay like if he bought well i mean overwatch is not a steam game but what if he bought you know CSGO and he was on voice chat campaigning mm, how do you explain the groceries <laughs> groceries are not allowed for campaign <laughs> was, he com- was he campaigning to chef boy rd <laughs> yeah so he's gonna go away for a while and he should that's good to see I have a feeling this is some sort of partisan thing, though. It's like, we need to get him out. We need to find something. Consult the database. Well, they found a lot. Yeah, they did. So, uh, now this, uh, you know, we're into the winter. Actually, it's technically not winter yet, is it? But it will be very soon. Soon. And you're going to fire up that fireplace. Put some logs on. That's very cozy and comfortable. But maybe you want a little something more out of your fire this winter. Maybe you want... A special kind of scent. Kentucky Fried Chicken is now selling fried chicken scented fire logs for the holiday season. Original recipe, of course. Is there any chance, any ch- any statistically significant chance that there's not a serious carcinogen in one of those? <laughs> How do you make that smell uh, out of a log? Colonel Sanders' original recipe did involve shoe polish. There you go. But... I bet that would drive, drive your pets crazy as well. Yeah, yeah. You think there's like, going to be like a little chihuahua dog that just throws itself into a fire? <laughs> Somebody I smell chicken. KFC. What's going on? <laughs> well, this is this is an amazing PR stunt. Whoever there, whoever came up with this is is the. You know, it seems like KFC they're willing to take the risk when it comes to advertising, right? Because they'll they'll do crazy commercials and campaigns and <laughs> the dating app. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. They, and they miss as often as they hit, but the, I figure you the D and D campaign. Think about a crappy like milk toast, where you're not taking risks and people aren't laughing at you, but they also <laughs> just don't care. So I think if they're laughing at you, at least they're aware of you, right? You're driving down the road and you're like, God, that that Yule log is the stupidest thing ever. We well, should I could go for some mashed potatoes. We should get one of those for the uh, Christmas level one news. We don't have a fireplace that vents into the. Eh, we could probably open a window. It's probably fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's okay. <laughs> I put this one in because I thought Krista would enjoy it. Um, she does have stories about being banned from Minecraft servers. <laughs> I don't remember why. Do you remember why? No, I don't remember why. But she's got several stories about like she would go on Minecraft servers and be banned because they didn't. She, <laughs> she had didn't, very strong opinions she about things. She didn't play correctly with the other children (laughs) but now there's a place that all those little minecraft snowflakes can go the vatican a vatican priest is making his own minecraft server to offer a less toxic community for gamers one jesuit priest is planning to launch a vatican minecraft server father robert belliser belliser uh as a jesuit priest he's gonna he's he sort of looked at you know kids spend a lot of time in minecraft and he's thinking, hey, maybe this would actually be a good place for the church to do some stuff because, good lord, it's toxic. And the mouth on some of these kids, I gotta say, I agree with him. There's no politeness. 
I can think of some things that Catholic priests have done that are more toxic than my chats. <laughs> Probably not good to let this guy alone with the wife. <laughs> I wouldn't let my kids do that. <laughs> but I wouldn't let my kids out of the house. So, yeah. <laughs> That would be disturbing, like 12-year-old me. It's like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm playing with Minecraft with this old guy. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Only people from the uh, parish would be allowed to join, but still that's... <laughs> He's mm. going to show me his sticky piston later. <laughs> <laughs> Real excited about that. Monkeys. We don't have monkeys in this country, and I'm glad because I hate monkeys. But some places in the world, they got monkeys just running around in the wild. It's crazy. And they're protected sometimes. Yeah. And monkeys will steal your food, your crops, and they're really hard to catch. I mean, think about how hard it is to deal with our pests. And monkeys are so much smarter and mobile. So what do you do? Well, they have an ingenious plan for dealing with these monkeys. Farmer's monkey scaring plan is a roaring hit. Well, they, the picture implies they painted their dog to look, look like a tiger, this. but they also put pictures around their farm. This guy is adorable. With those straps. <laughs> do you think he has sort of an identity crisis? It's like, what am I? Yeah, well, that or he's like, what did you do to my fur? This is this is crazy. This is a dye that apparently lasts for like three months. So yeah, and the the monkeys have not been a problem for these farmers. Although you got to think, eventually these these monkeys are going to learn, right? Yeah, and then they're just. Do you think there's ever going to be a situation where this desensitizes them to the tigers? Yeah. And tigers are just feasting on monkeys. And then there's a tiger population explosion. <laughs> I hope we hear about that story later. <laughs> uh, that'll be great. This is another one that I really wanted Krista to see. Yeah, I don't. I feel unqualified to comment on this one. But she's talked <laughs> about this before, too. So apparently there's like some camping gear. That's oh, similar. Yeah, she has talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I was curious, like, which way do you think she would go on this? I don't know. I think she would be for it, but maybe not. Mm-hmm. Out in 90 seconds, female urinals will have a peeing time for women, says Hong Kong Toilet Association. So the Hong Kong Toilet Association was looking at people in and out of male, like, exactly equally equipped male and female toilets. Dudes get in and out a lot faster. And the solution is a paper funnel. And urinals. And urinals. So, yeah, they're going to have like a stack of these. It's, I guess it's going to be like those uh, cup dispensers. Yeah. Like at the, you know, or like the ice cream cone dispensers. Neat. You just pop one of these off. And I got to wonder, though, like how hygienic is that? I feel wholly unqualified to eat. Like, I don't even know. <laughs> I guess it's... The volume would never build up, right? Yeah. Like you can't generate enough pressure that it would wash back. There's, the, the, I don't know. It's, it's weird. There's, there's definitely, there's. I would imagine that there's enough pressure for some splashback. Just also, the other thing to think about here is, you know, with the the male genitalia, you can, you can keep your pants on while you're working it. This you're gonna have to, you're gonna, they're gonna Gotta be juggle. around your ankles. You're going to be double hand in that little cup and you're going to be bare ass to the world while you're straddling <laughs> this. I mean, it's, it seems a little, uh, it, it's not dignified. No. Is, is, I guess my thoughts about it. That seems like a lot of words to say there's going to be a new category on Pornhub. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, there's like a silicon one too. You think that's reusable? I would hope not. <laughs> we are creating waste. We're killing trees <laughs> with this. And that's the here we go. Here's an action. Look how happy this. Guy is. <laughs> uh, uh, oh yeah, that's an interesting one. I don't know. Ah, we'll see. So it turns out uh, they have like a commission on public toilets, and they're gonna like vote on whether or not this is a good idea. I like those urinals better because there's a place to put like uh, there's a place to put your phone. That's there's, nice. Yeah. There's a purse and there's a curtain. You would, of course, you would have your phone up there still looking at it. I mean, I've definitely been in the men's bathroom sometimes when I really wished that there had been a curtain for my urinal. Yeah. Well, those handicap urinals, like, make it impossible to get oh, yeah. close to it. So, we might as well just be using a trough at this point. You know? <laughs> it's just somebody's looking at your penis. That's <laughs> the world we live in. I remember a time when bathroom urinals were actually a trough. Yeah, the grade school ones. <laughs> Literally just a bunch of kids just pissing in a trough. That's where we come from. 
<laughs> it's Christmas time, and one of the big tr- Christmas traditions is, of course, the sweater. I don't like sweaters. The awful sweater. I find them itchy, but it is sort of like that. Oh, who can get the ugliest sweater? It's the time of year when it's okay to wear something terrible on purpose. And Walmart, of course, wants to sell you your ugly Christmas sweater. <laughs> Walmart wants to sell you literally anything. Oh, that's true. But Walmart Canada might not have vetted their inventory. <laughs> this inventory was amazing. Walmart.ca pulls Christmas sweater featuring Santa with cocaine. It's only implied. This is this is fine. Well, he's, he's got some snow here. It says, let it snow. And he's cut it into tiny little lines. <laughs> this he, is perfectly fine. His eyes are kind of bugging out. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Uh, there's some other ones that were amazing that they also yeah, pulled. That this is actually maybe the most. Um, the, you could make the most argument that this one's not offensive. <laughs> yeah, but the other ones. <laughs> I touch my elf. <laughs> that's a good one. Actually, this guy looks like how it would be if those women were using those urinals. <laughs> yeah, and then we've got that one's pretty suggestive. <laughs> In case you don't realize what was being in, it's this is the male genitalia. <laughs> oh Lord! Uh, and there's I didn't uh, see that one. That's Santa getting a probe from an alien. <laughs> Not sure, like what that one even means. Oh, it's the BSDM Santa, classic. Oh, they don't have the elf one. Oh, they but, did. Yeah, when I think about you, I touch my elf, and it was elf on the shelf. Yeah. <laughs> that's all we got this week i don't know is next week is next week uh the live news or the one after uh no we have two weeks left before the christmas week right? oh yeah that's right so like christmas week is probably going to be live news on like, christmas sunday. is on wednesday this year right so we'll do will we do live sunday or live tuesday probably live well we could do it during the day on tuesday because everybody's going to be gone doesn't matter doesn't really matter you think Chris is going to be around for that? I don't know. We'll have to figure out what Chris's schedule is. It'll, we'll post the new uh, the announcement on Patreon a little closer time. Maybe also Twitter. Also, do I want to be hungover driving to my parents' house Probably on not. Christmas Day or Christmas Eve? <laughs> oh, wait. Is Christmas Day on Wednesday? Yeah, that would be Christmas Eve on Tuesday. So that definitely means yeah, we streaming on Monday. Out. Or uh, Sunday. Sunday or Monday. I will figure it out. Let's know. See you next week.